Hi again, everybody. It's Kevin Canessa coming to you from the newsroom of The Observer and TheObserver.com on this, the 13th day of December in the year 2021. Sure hope you're enjoying your Monday, no matter where it is you are in the country. And as you do each and every week, you welcome me into your home so that I can bring to you the current week's newspaper, some of which you've already seen online, but uh, from the front cover, Run for MetLife. And this is something that was very unique on Friday. There are runners from West Point who carried with them from West Point, New York, the game football for Saturday's Army-Navy game, which was played over at MetLife Stadium. And en route to MetLife Stadium, which was the final stop, the penultimate stop was in North Arlington, where they stopped at Zadroga Field and paid respects to the victims of September 11, 2001, at the monument up over on Schuyler Avenue in front of the field. And this is really neat. They they all ran all the way from West Point, New York, all the way to the stadium. And once they left North Arlington through Lynnhurst, they went to East Rutherford, where the game ball was delivered to be used. So the same football that was there for kickoff was the one that started off at Army and made its way through Kearney, North Arlington, Lynnhurst, and ultimately MetLife Stadium. There was a whole crew of people who were assembled at Zadroga Field to welcome them. Great bunch of young kids, uh, all cadets from the Army Academy in West Point. And it was nice to get a chance to meet them. And there was a whole bunch of people from North Arlington who assembled, including Mayor Dan Pronti. A bunch of the council were there as well. And it was just an all-around nice day to see them and to see this special thing that happened. Of course, Navy won 17-13 in the game on Saturday. And it was a huge crowd, I think one of the biggest ever At MetLife Stadium, over 82,000 people were in attendance. So we appreciate Rich Hughes calling us, the former councilman, and inviting us over there for that. And uh, you'll see the uh, photos on the front page of this week's edition of The Observer. Staying in North Arlington, the blotter this week from Lieutenant Horton has two more vehicles being stolen from homes, in front of homes, with the cars unlocked and the keys left in the vehicles. You know, it's it's getting so repetitive now, having to say it over and over, but all these vehicles are being stolen because they know the keys are being left in there, the criminals. And people continue to leave their keys in the car and leave them unlocked, even if they're on a driveway or in a in a uh, garage. So I can probably sit here till I'm blue in the face reminding people that you got to lock your cars or else they're going to get stolen. That's just the bottom line. And two more were stolen in North Arlington at the end of November. So please remember to lock your cars and take the keys in the house. It's just such an easy solution to make sure your car doesn't get stolen. So that, uh, of course, from Lieutenant Horton at the North Arlington Police Department. We have another story from the NAPD that we'll get to. Uh, actually, I'll just jump to it right now. The police officers there are being outfitted or have been outfitted with Axon 3 body cameras. In 2002, North Arlington was one of the early adopters of cameras for the uh, police cruisers. So they absolutely are ahead of the curve uh, in that regard. And they're all going to start wearing, they all started wearing them on Friday, the body-worn cameras. And of course, every police department has to now in the state of New Jersey, but it is now official. The police officers in North Arlington are now outfitted with these cameras. Uh, Sticking on a police route, uh, again, this uh, comes from Lyndhurst to Class 3 police officers were hired, and those officers will be completely school resource officers. They'll rotate among the schools in Lyndhurst, and what it appears is that that the two guys that they hired in Class 3 police officers are normally retired officers who are looking to make a little extra money. So these two guys who work up to 40 hours a week rotate among the schools and will only work when schools are in session. Moving to Nutley. The superintendent of schools, Julie Glazer, has decided to step down at the end of the school year after six years as Nutley superintendent, and we have a little look back at her career 
as superintendent of the Nutley school system. The Carney police blotter from Captain Tim Wagner, we're very heavy police this week, is, uh, begins with a man who, uh, I'm going to quote this here, manipulated himself through the hole in his long johns. So you can imagine this guy was drunk, he got arrested, and then that happened. So check that out and a bunch of other items in this week's Carney police blotter. Mayor Mike Melham in Belleville led a tour of flood-prone neighborhood near the Third River. And he had Essex County Executive Joe DiVincenzo and a bunch of other dignitaries there with him to explain the situation during Hurricane Ida. It was a very, very bad overflow, and these neighborhoods are constantly being uh, flooded out whenever the uh, banks of the Third River overflow. So there's uh, a serious problem there that needs to be fixed, and the mayor is addressing it. Jim Haig has a couple of sports stories, including about the Harrison boys basketball team, same in North Arlington, and also the Kearney basketball team. So three stories about basketball, hard to believe basketball season is already upon us. And then, of course, it is the second anniversary of the death of Detective Joseph Seals of the Jersey City Police Department. And, of course, of the gentleman, Mr. Rodriguez, who lived in Harrison and worked at the deli, who was killed that fateful day, hard to believe, two years ago, already on December the 10th. So that's going to do it, uh, believe it or not, for this week's edition of The Observer Live. I want to thank each and every one of you for logging on and joining me today. Don't forget, we'd like to thank all of you uh, who have uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you haven't yet, if you could, we'd appreciate it. A very special thanks to Melanie Ryan, who was able to secure over 100 plus new subscribers for us just yesterday alone. Melanie, thank you so much for what you did. We're very, very grateful. And to all of you who have subscribed, it helps us. We need a thousand subscribers. So we're still, old. we're still, believe it or not, 700 away. I'm getting there just about 300 right now. And in order to broadcast live with a mobile phone, we need it uh, to get to 1,000. So if you could help us, we would certainly appreciate that very, very much. But if anything breaks during the course of the week, we'll join you then. And until then, we'll see you back here one week from today from the newsroom of The Observer and TheObserver.com. Kevin Kinesis signing off for now. We'll see you back here again very, very soon. Take care, everybody.